Hello, my name is George McKinney, and I'm with the LA Phone Gap user group. We are also an Adobe user group, and you can go to both of our pages on Adobe Groups or Meetup pages to find out more information about our organization and uh, activities and resources that are available to you. Today I'm going to show you how to create Phone Gap applications for BlackBerry, Android, iOS, and Windows phones. There are some prerequisites that we need to cover first uh, in terms of how you can uh, create your application. The first thing that you're going to need is a web application. Because PhoneGap uses a web browser, HTML, CSS, JavaScript are all necessary in order to, uh, to compile it. You can either have a single index.html file or a zip file that contains an index.html and other resources that the application is going to be needing. For this particular uh, method that we're showing, you're also going to need either an Adobe ID or a GitHub account. And I'm going to show you how to get that, as well as a device that you want to test it on. You can do it also on simulators, but it's just a lot more fun if you have a device. So these, uh, the way we're going to show it is going to be using an internet uh, or a computer that has internet. And an optional way of deployment is also to use a QR code reader for Android and BlackBerry. It makes it really convenient. So first thing is we're going to create a zip file uh, with the resources. Uh, next thing we're going to upload this to PhoneGap Build. That's Adobe's service for creating multiple applications, uh, six platforms uh, at this point, and you can upload your information. Uh, for iOS, if you want to build an application, you're also going to need to have some security files, the P12 and the mobile provisioning file, which I'm not going to cover here. Uh, the last thing you want to do is be able to actually put it on to your device, and so we're going to do some of that. Um, so the phone gap build is located here at build.phonegap.com, and this is where the zip file is going. The zip file that we're going to be putting up is going to contain an index file, configuration file for phone gap build, as well as these images. What's inside the index.html is a pretty standard uh, Hello World application. We have a doc type specification for HTML5. Uh, we have uh, an image and a link that when you click on it, it goes to our web page. The configuration file is a way of telling the compiler, um, uh, the, serv the phone gap server, how to handle your application. So. For more information on how to use the configuration file, you can go to this web page. I'm just going to step through. This is an optional parameter determining what version of PhoneGap to use. I'm going to deploy it to 1.9, although if you leave this out, it'll use whatever is currently available. Uh, I believe today uh, 2.0 is what's uh, the, it's on PhoneGap build. This application will have no device API access, so no accelerometer, no um, uh, media streaming, um, no uh, GPS uh, capabilities. You can omit this or define which permissions you actually want to use. Uh, again, you can go to the configuration uh, documentation up there. Next thing is for the icons. This is so when you look at it on the device, it will have the logo that you creating. And then for starting up, you need a splash icon. So these are the different file sizes that this image is going to be stretched into uh, on the various platforms for iOS, Android, Blackberry, and Windows Phone. Uh, one last thing, uh, going back to the icon for Blackberry, it needs to be less than 16 kilobytes. Okay. Uh, our name, short description, a little about the author, and now uh, this is the logo that we're using. Now, the first thing we're going to have to do is log into PhoneGap Build. Adobe's created it so that you can use their Adobe ID, which is a great place to learn about their software. Um, and if you have an Adobe ID, you can get access to their resources. Uh, if you have a GitHub account, then you can look at a lot of open source projects and take their code and build them into your uh, PhoneGap apps. And 
just uh, before we get started here, when you first log into PhoneGap, it's going to ask you for a, a file uh, that you want to either upload uh, or a repository to retrieve in order to immediately start creating your uh, application. And just to uh, reiterate, every PhoneGap uh, build uh, project has got to have an index HTML file in it. Okay, and the last thing uh, before we put the applications on the devices, uh, QR readers are helpful, although um, I think the best advantage is for like Blackberry and Android devices. And then if you want to use the native tool chain, um, basically creating the, you know, the developer environment on your computer, you can do that as well, although it takes more time and um, there's other places you can go to get that information. Uh, okay. So now let's step over here. Inside this Hello LA PhoneGap folder are the files. So here's the index.html config and this is just what I showed you before. Uh, just using a simple text editor and here's the configuration file and so no magic yet what we're going to do is take all of these files and compress them into one zip file so there we go now I'm going to come back and use this later but I'm going to create a phone gap build So I'm going to register uh, hmm, with Adobe ID, but wait, I don't have an Adobe ID, so I'm going to create one here. George at LA Phone Gap. So now I'm going to call this Hello LA Phone Gap. You can make this private um, for the free accounts. Um, they only give you one repository, so I'm just going to uncheck that. You can also do debugging, um, which is very um, useful for JavaScript. You can do like you know remote inspection, um, but we're not going to do that. And I'm going to turn this off as well. Now I'm going to upload this zip file that we had, which is right here. And now I'm going to create the application. And we can see that we've got a big red box. Well, why do we have a red box here? It's because there's no um, information for iOS we have to have a key. So let me add a key here. Here's my P12. Here's a provisioning file. I created these ahead of time. Um, and, hmm. See if I can remember my password here. While the iOS version is building, we can already take a look at these. So 
we've got good compilation for the Android, Blackberry, Symbian, and WebOS. download this IPA and we're going to download the Windows Phone version as well and now that we're going directly to the device uh, I'm going to switch this off and go into a video recording mode now I'm going to show you how to get the application on the device. So I'm going to start my QR code reader, uh, Google Goggles, and now I'm going to scan this QR code, open the browser, and there we go. Now we can see all the files, so I'm going to just go for the Android version here. Now I can see it's starting to download, and now it says download complete install now open there's a splash screen now you see it's working like it's just a hyperlink open the link all right so you can see that we are now outside of the app and on the web page so that's one device so the next thing I'll show you is for the blackberry this one also has a QR code reader here by Cornplay. Go scan QR. It pops up. We captured it. Takes us to the same page the Android was looking at. So at this time we go over the area install for Blackberry. Accept the permissions. Now it's installing Hello LA Phone Gap. Looks like it's almost done now. Done. Now let's run it. Accept it. There's launch screen, more permissions. So now you can see it's running here. Click on the link again. It's going to take you to our meetup page. go. can turn these off. Now we're going to try the same thing with this device, this iOS. So this, this one, I downloaded the IPA. This is for use with iTunes. So now I'm going to bring that up. Oh, let me turn on iTunes. So we need to drag Hello World into the apps area. Now we can see it's been added. Now we go to the device and then go to the apps category. Select it and now we can apply the changes then we're going to be able to see it's syncing and there it is installing click on it and there we go all right now the last device we're going to be using is this Nokia Windows phone 
there's nothing here now but this procedure is a little bit different uh, this requires Zoom uh, to be running as well as there's different ways of deploying I'm just going to do the Windows Phone 7 SDK and use your application deployment program so bring this over here so we either do it on the emulator uh, which is on the computer or on the device so let's go for the device browse um, here's our downloads folder this is the one now we go deploy uh, oh zoom software is not launched so let's turn zoom on there it is so phone is locked that's the thing you have to make sure that you have access to the menu items of a Windows phone in order to install software this way so this is done now we're going to hit deploy again So now it says deployment complete. And there we go. Hello, LA phone gap. Well, that doesn't look so good, but this is just a test. So click on the link again. And let's see if we have a. Oh, yeah, I think this one <laughs> doesn't have internet access. But at any rate, we can see the Windows phone. Uh, application load up so let's uh, close out of these now and so this shows how we can get to building mobile apps pretty quickly using uh, phone gap there are more things that you can do to give you more control over the app and, and definitely in terms of the programming wise uh, there's a lot more <laughs> needs to be done uh, but you can cover that elsewhere. But this gives you a quick orientation as to building for multiple devices using this technology. So uh, check our webpage for more information, and uh, we'll see you next time.